So I want to start off with saying that when I had first started sewing, I didn't have money to buy measuring tape, to buy a lot of items that you could use, right? I've learned to sew um, using the basic sewing skills, using um, my imagination. I've taken things and I've just looked at it and I figured it out. I never had something like this before. And as I grew sewing and I grew older, um, I started to learn the new tricks and watching other people sew. I had a great opportunity to learn to sew from Shannon Gustafson and she's, uh, she had a lot of patience with me. <laughs> so um, <clears throat> what I'm going to make today is a very, very simple um, medicine bag. Um, it's just basically what I like to call is like the pillow type. How do you call it? Something put your pillow in? Pillowcase. <laughs> Just a big brain fart. Okay, so it's like call it a pillowcase method, all right? It's very simple. It's um, anybody can do it. It's just a little bit of ironing to get your line straight. And I have this here. This is for me, this is one of my best friends. This is Heat and Bond. Um, one side has the matted uh, tape part, and the other one has the glue on one side. Um, I like to use this for me because it helps me um, make straighter lines. And there's other options that you can use out there, but today I have this one for you. Um, <laughs> the type of thread I like to use is all multi-purpose kind. Um, but this one here is a polyester and it does the same thing. It works well. The ribbon that I choose to use the most is a satin that's double base satin. So it's easier for me because sometimes I'm forgetful when I'm sewing because I just kind of go just zoom through things. <laughs> so this is a double-sided satin. It, um, yeah, it's easier to work with. So because this satin has a bunch of lines, um, I have uh, some fabric down here. So whatever's on the table isn't going to get on the ribbon. Um, <clears throat> what I like to do is just iron it quickly. Because with satin, the only thing that sucks about satin is it, um, it can burn easily and it can shrink and it, it just, sometimes it can be a real bugger. <laughs> so I usually like to iron mine down a bit to make it a bit straighter so you don't see it when it's on there. Um, so about this sewing machine here, the first thing I talk about when using a sewing machine and teaching about it is Believe it or not, this sewing machine has a spirit. And when I say that is because sometimes when you're sewing, it'll teach your, it'll test your patience. It'll test your creativity. And even though it's a machine and it's plugged in, there's still a lot that goes in the sewing machine. And I always try and treat my sewing machines with respect because this sewing machine that I have at home, it makes my children's regalias. It makes my husband's regalias and mine. And I'm grateful for my machine because it, it works well with me. <laughs> and sometimes um, I do get frustrated and um, I kind of get mad at machine, my machine and I'm like, oh, why wouldn't it work? So I have to step back. Um, a big teaching I was told is that when you're sewing, um, what you're putting into what you're making, it goes along with your emotions. And if you're ma especially if you're making something for somebody else, um, you want to have that clear mind and good thoughts. You don't want to carry those emotions and sew it into the item that you're making for somebody and for yourself as well. <clears throat> so to start this, um, it looks like this in the front. Um, they're under here. Oh, this is okay. Under here, you take this part out, and then here it has a, I call it a pocket. And it has a pocket of different uh, items that you can use, like the thread ripper, the thread, the thread, uh, bobbins, um, some more needles, your things to help with your machine. Um, you open this flap down here, and in there is, which one is it? has a little circle thing in there and there's a little lever here and you would just pop that out. And in here is this little thread. I don't know the correct terms to all these so I call it like doodads and this thingy and this little buddy here. <laughs> so 
So this little doodad <laughs> is the bottom stitch in the bobbin, yeah, the bottom stitch um, that I'll go through on the bottom here and it'll come up. And I always get questioned how to do this part and it took me a long time to figure it out too. Um, I kept having a machine jamming up on me and, and like breaking on me and uh, it was really frustrating. Oh, I got like behind here. <laughs> so what I do is I, I put it in here and then there's a little, uh, this little, uh, there's like a little slit there. And I always say, wait for the three clicks. So you got, oh, it ripped. <laughs> So there's three clicks. There's one, two, oh, this is the two one, yeah. And you would pull it through here and you wait for the click again and it should run smoothly. One thing um, I usually do keep beside me is uh, like a garbage can um, to keep my area clean. That's really important because um, it can get dirty like really fast when you're sewing and you won't even realize it until you're done, then you're like, oh no, I gotta clean all that up. <laughs> so while putting this in, um, you'll notice that in here where the needle is, um, there's like a little opening that'll open in there when you lift your needle up and down with this little circle thingy here. And, <clears throat> and when you slap this in there, you'll hear it click. That's how you know what's in there. Um, if it doesn't click, it's not going to work. And you'll notice that because this thing we turn, it'll go, mm, it won't move. Um, <clears throat> so now that guy's in there. You'll wait to thread it through. So you're going to use your thread. You'll put your thread through this little hole there. And there's actually numbers on here to show you how to thread it. And this took me a lot of practice too because Sometimes I wouldn't thread it right, and then I have to restart again. So it's a learning process. So there's one here, and it says number two, you go down, four, you lift this again, you'll see like this little hook here, and then you pull it down again. Um, I wish I can do it backwards so I can show you guys, but I can't. <laughs> so once you get that through, I always recut at the end, so I have like a nice clean cut because now you're gonna go through this needle hole. And it's easier to lift the needle back up. So you're gonna be playing with this thing a lot when you're setting your machine up. And then, as number six says, you're gonna put it through the hole. Now, I know, I know I'm young, but I always gotta like take my glasses off to see it. <laughs> There's a tiny little hole. And then you would thread this through. Um, <clears throat> once you get that part in, what I normally do is I hold this thread and I let my needle go through. And when you do that, there will be the thread from the bottom that will come up. And I usually take my scissors and pull it through some more. So you should have this string. Um, for beginners, you would want a nice long string to be out because sometimes, um, you'll lose that string when your needle starts to go because it like pulls back. I always try and keep a nice long one when I'm showing. Um, but as you, as you sew more and more, you'll have your own flow. And I find that really important that you remind people that when you're sewing, you'll find your flow. This is my flow. Um, other people uh, will set their machines up differently. They have their own... Uh, their own ways of um, your tension, you, how far you want your zigzags to go. And like I said, I'm not familiar with the right words, but I'm always like, just use 554. <laughs> and they're like, what do you mean 554? And I'm like, so there's numbers here. And that's how I learned from this machine is teaching myself um, just by what's on there and not finding out the, the real terms. And um, so now that that's set up, um, when I make medicine bags, I like to use the color red because um, with my medicines in there, um, the spirits see red. 
right? Um, and I feel, for me personally, I just feel that more of connection when I use red. <coughs> so when I, when I was younger, and I never had to use rulers and stuff, and I just used my eyes for everything. Um, my things never turned out perfect because of that, right? But when I'm doing orders, now that I'm older and more experienced, I do use measuring tape and, excuse me, and rulers and everything to make it as perfect as I can. But personally, I, I don't take orders anymore because it's a lot of stress and a lot of pressure. So I just make things for myself and my family. And uh, my family, whatever they receive, you know, for me, they feel, I feel grateful that they just want to wear it. And um, so what I do, I'm just going to cut a little bit off here. Another good thing to remember is to get yourself a good pair of scissors. I know they're quite expensive. A uh, good pair of scissors ranges from like 30 to 40, sometimes $60, if you want a good pair. Um, <clears throat> these ones here, I believe they're about $24, $26, this pair here, because I was recently looking at it and I was like, do I want to buy that? Do I need that? <laughs> and uh, my partner happened to buy it for me for Christmas, so it was really nice. Um, <clears throat> So what I do is, so we all know what a pillowcase looks like, right? The pillow just kind of flips in there and it works perfectly fine. Um, the bag that I'm going to make is actually going to be pretty small. The type of fabric I like to use is like a, a cotton-based fabric. I prefer to use something with a pattern because it helps, it helps me like see the lines better and make it straighter. Um, and that's something I usually tell beginners with skirts and stuff to pick a pattern because it's a lot easier to follow, right? Um, <clears throat> so making this skirt, skirt, <laughs> this pillowcase, um, you see there's lines on it from when it was folded, right? So what I like to do is I like to iron it out to give me that nice clean slate of the fabric and not having the lines. And also be careful when you are using a fabric because sometimes your iron will just burn naturally on it and it'll lose the color that you picked, um, which I think this one actually will do. Because I don't know, I'm not the person to have labels of things. I'm usually by sight and by touch person. So I'll be in the fabric line touching all the fabrics. I'm like, oh, that's the one I like. <laughs> I just, that's just how it works for me, right? So you're going to want to iron this. And I usually try and do a quick iron. This is my clumsiness, I'm just naturally hazardous. I'm only <laughs> and I've burned some of my fabric on accident trying to get all the creases out, right? So because this is going to be a pillow effect, I usually try and go for like a rectangle shape. And for me, is I would fold it as so. And um, this would be probably as big as it'll be. Now, to get my lines on my sides. Oh, and before I do that, um, <clears throat> I usually measure out how big I want my ribbon to be on it as well, just like how I would do with ribbon skirts, is I would pre-cut my ribbons. Actually feels kind of difficult to explain it in like out loud, and if I was doing it, I'd just be like <laughs> So it's uh, a little different to say it out loud. <laughs> so this stuff here, like I was saying, is, um, heat and bond. And what it does is I will iron it onto the ribbon and then I would take the tape off and then I would iron the ribbon onto the fabric. <clears throat> but before I do that, I always like to get this thing um, done first. So it's, it's, for me, I find it a lot easier. So when I was younger and I, and I learned how to do a straight line is I use the floor, because each floor has tiles on it, right? 
And I would use the tiles as a straight line to cut and to put my ribbon on. Mind you, I was about 14, 15 when I started to, to do this. And my mom just had a sewing machine. I was like, can I try that? She's like, do you know how? And I was like, no. <laughs> And then my aunt, uh, she had it, and I asked her if I can use it, and she's like, do you know how? And I said, no, and she's like, well, I'll show you. And she just gave me these basic tips. <clears throat> so what I'm going to do on the side here is I'm going to cut um, my sides here as straight as I can. Like, you can use all kinds of things to um, make your line straight and however design you want to use on your bag. But when I show how to, how to sew, it's just like coloring or drawing. When you're younger, you start off with like stick people, right? You learn how to do little drawings, right? And then as you get older, you progress into facial, facial features, body features, clothing. And it's just like sewing. You just start with something very simple um, that's not so intimidating. Right? <clears throat> so I'm going to cut the top here as well. The reason why I, I show this way as well is because when people are learning about sewing, I find they are <laughs> intimidated, right? Um, because they see a lot of stuff out there and, and a lot of people make beautiful things. And um, I know people that are in Delico that do sew and a lot of things that they sew are beautiful as well, right? <clears throat> so this is, I just show like a very, very simple, very basic, nothing fancy, something that somebody has never touched a sewing machine before um, can learn how to do on the day of. I guess I should go like, like this. So what I do is I line my ribbon down and I put this heat and bond on top. And I will run it through on top. My glasses keep falling. <laughs> and when you're teaching someone to using this, um, remind them that even the ribbon and stuff sometimes has like a mind of its own where it likes to move on you. And um, just keep it in mind of when you're, when you're heat and bonding your ribbon that, that the bias tape might move on you. Mm -hmm. Hot. So, um, when I put the ribbons in, just like how you would do a skirt is for the banding, I would make a seam in here. So to make a seam, um, I usually start with a small seam first. And with that is just folding a little piece over. And you would iron that down. And to get the same thing on the other side, I would just flip it over and do it again. The reason why that I keep it in one whole thing as well is because it's, it's easier, I found that it was easier to teach this way, to give just that basic skill, right? <clears throat> and then I would do with another seam down. And this seam here will be where the ribbon would go so you can tie the bag up. Um, the reason why I'm folding it over as well 
is because what you do on one side, you got to do it on the other side. So this part here would be the seam of the bag that I would sew, sew down on each side. <coughs> the next part that I would normally do is I would add my ribbon. And, oh, I didn't heat it enough. It's okay, though. This paper will just come off like so. And you would have on one side um, the glue. And you would iron that on as well. Oh, that's hot. And the reason why that I keep it together as well, um, it would be because then I can see where my ribbon is done on both ends. So then I would have an ideal of uh, where my ribbon would be. And I get asked a lot of what, uh, what type of heat, heat setting should it be on. Um, honestly, I'm like, as long as it sticks, it's good. <laughs> if it makes it stick together on the fabric, you're doing good. And it's not burning it, it's good. Because, like, again, I don't, I don't speak steam master language. <laughs> So I usually just do settings, and um, like I said, as long as it sticks, it's, it's working, right? Oh, God. Okay. And here comes the fun part. For me personally, I like to have most of it done already. So by the time I get to this point that I can just zoop, 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 done, right? That, that's how I like to do it. Um, so <clears throat> if I were to sew it like this, you would see all the edgings and everything out, right? Actually, I think I'm going to cut it down a little bit more. It'll be a wide little bag. That's better. So what I always do first this is the pedal that will run your machine. Um, you know I should do this. For beginners also there's a, a thing I like to do called a, a test run to make sure your machine is uh, doing what you would want it to do, right? So this here um, is a lever that you would pull down to put your teeth down. I call this thing the teeth, because it looks like caribou teeth, you know? <laughs> um, so my settings I usually do is five, five, four. That's the ones that I prefer. Um, I prefer um, bigger, bigger zigzag. Normally push on this like how you're driving. Um, <clears throat> so the, the more further you push it down, the faster it's gonna go. Um, so when you're beginning, you start with this little piece here so you can get used to the machine because some people, when they first start, they're like, whoa, that was fast because they, they go like this. This is the beginner. Normally, I would tell them, put your needle down so that it's in the fabric already. And then they would go like this. Whoa, what just happened? And I'd be like, oh, you had the wrong stitching on. We're going to do zigzag stitching. So they'd be like, okay. And I'm like, okay, let's try it again. Put your teeth down zigzag on but this time go slower slower yeah okay wow and I'm like no you guys slower you got to get used to the machine because you want this machine to go smoothly right now for me I find that when I'm sewing um, I like to keep a steady pace as well because when you're, I find that if you're gonna stop and go, stop and go, the, it just, it does its, it does its own thing after, right? Where it's like, your lines are uneven. And you'd want it to have a nice straight line, right? And um, 
This one actually might be good. Okay. <clears throat> so what I always tell them um, to be able to teach them how to do straight lines without them even knowing it is I tell them to go half on, half off. And they're like, what do you mean half on, half off? Half on the fabric, half on the seam, half on the fabric, half on the ribbon. And it gives them that, that line to follow. And I always tell them like, there's a little hole on here where you can see where it's going to go half on and half off. So while you're sewing, I tell them just watch that little hole and hold your fabric because it'll pull it. And you'll find a lot of sewers will pull it up here and like pull it, but you're actually pulling the tension and it's going to rip your thread or it's going to cause problems in the machine. <laughs> so I always tell them to go gentle and let, it, let the machine sew for you, but just guide it. There is this button on here. You can't, I have to turn it up. It goes reverse. <laughs> and you push this button and it, what I tell them, it, it locks it in. It locks your thread in so that um, when you're using it, it's not going to fall apart. And what it does is it does a quick back stitch. So it goes like zigzag and then it goes back and then you go again. And it locks that, that thread in. And I always tell them, go gentle when you're sewing. And like driving, you would guide how you want your vehicle to go straight is how you would guide the straight line of your, your thread. And at the end, you would back it again to lock it in, just like how you would do at the front. A lot of people don't know either that on the side of here, there's actually um, a very little thing here. And it has a very sharp, like, knife, I guess, guide. Thread color, mokuman, yeah. There's a little mokuman in there that's going to cut your thread. <laughs> it's his little job there. <laughs> so, like I said, what you do on one side, you would do on the other. So now that we have our seams in, we need to sew down our ribbon as well. And um, you would do the exact same thing. So give me a second here. I got to sew down these uh, ribbons. <laughs> and I do go a bit faster when I'm sewing by myself because I've been sewing for a while. When uh, sometimes too, when you're sewing, your lines will go off. And for me, because I'm not, um, I'm not a professional sewer, I'm not a professional seam seamstress. I am basically a at-home mom that's self-taught on this machine. And you'll notice that with people is that everybody has their, like I said, their own flow. And like I said, this is my flow. <coughs> And when people are sewing, they'll find their own flow of how to feed the, th the fabric through the machine. <clears throat> and I, I always uh, cut these thread off. So now I have this part done. This part here is pretty much the bag itself. The way that to hide those seams is you flip it inside out. Just like how you would sew your skirt together and you have that beautiful seam on the edge. <clears throat> and because there was a seam um, already made when you had folded the other way, you would iron that down again to keep it nice and straight. When I do my edgings on things, I like to use the straight stitch. For me, it, it has less of a pull. When you're pulling it, it looks cleaner for me. <clears throat> And I wouldn't start um, right on the top here because you'd, you'd want that open, right, for the rest of your stuff. Also, when you're sewing it up, you want to stay a little bit of from the edge because you don't want it to go too close because if something goes in there too tight, it's just going to rip it open.
when I get to the edge, I put my needle down and I lift the teeth up. I switch it over, down again. It also helps you save threads so you're not re-threading it, re-threading it, you know, over and over because it gets kind of annoying when you gotta go, oh, okay. <laughs> My strings. <laughs> my, my strings. Um, there is a certain way that people do this part too. Some people will sew the banding or the string in here while they're doing it. Me, I always wait till the end and that's my finishing part on it is adding the thread or the, the banding and all that stuff. So it'll look like this when you sew it all up. So you got your your seam, your ribbon on both sides, and the edging of your bag. And you would flip it inside out. Hold on, I'm gonna hide the surprise. <laughs> you can all see under the table. <laughs> and then bam, you have a little bag. Um, the way that I would measure this is um, as much as it would go through. So you got one side, two sides, and I do three and a half. So you, no, three. So when you get it all through, you have room to tie your ribbon on. And the trick that I was told is because, that might be two. Two Yeah, two cha is um, to make sure your ribbon, because you would usually burn it so that it doesn't fray. What I do when I don't have a lighter with me is I fold the ribbon in half and I would cut it inwards and make one of these little cool little doodads at the end. And I would do it on both sides because as you can tell, that one is already fraying. Oh, wrong way. No, oh, it's okay. Because some people don't smoke. So I want to show a way of doing it that, that you don't smoke. Yeah, that'll work. And a piece of tape. Thank you, my little helpers. <laughs> Me glitch. Thanks. So I actually just recently learned this new little trick. Um, I always just used the safety pin and just went through a whole big 55 inch skirt. And <laughs> it's a long time to do it, <laughs> but, I, but no patience, right? So um, if you're at home and you're low income and you don't have a lot of money to get a lot of things, get some tape and a pen and you just wrap that ribbon and that pin on there so it'll look like this. And then you would open one of these seams on here and you would stick that pen through. And then you would pull one side out. So when you get the thread through, it'll look like this first. And then, bam. You pull that thread through. You put your mashkiki in there. <laughs> Pillowcase medicine bag. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> so
So that is the um, very basic, very easy way to show how to make a medicine bag. Um, there are a whole bunch of other things you can add on there. Um, but this one here, just like you know, you have to learn to crawl before you walk. Um, you can even start without the ribbon as well, just to get them used to the sewing machine. And showing them how to thread the machine is important first. Uh, if you don't know how to work one of these babies, you're going to have trouble making this child. <laughs> and that child is going to grow you into an adult because it's going to carry you for a long time. So when you're teaching, remember to be patient because um, a lot of people have struggle with working machines, especially um, ones that's never touched this before or heard about it. So when you're teaching about sewing, just remember to try and teach them how to work that. Because as they're sewing, they're going to get frustrated if it's not set up right. And then as a huge safety, safety thing, when you're done with your iron, plug it off. <laughs> but um, thanks, guys. Oh, <laughs>